Alkanes are saturated organic compounds, meaning that the carbon atoms are filled with hydrogen atoms. Methane is a one carbon alkane. It's M-E-T-H-A-N-E. -E. A two carbon alkane, C2H6, this is known as ethane. C3H8, this is called propane. C4H10, this is known as butane. So alkanes generally follow this formula, CnH2n plus 2. So a 5-carbon alkane will have 12 hydrogen atoms. If n is 5, then it's going to be H2 times 5 plus 2. So that's 10 plus 2, you get 12. A 5-carbon alkane is known as a pentane. A 6-carbon alkane is known as hexane. You may want to take some notes, by the way, because you'll need to know this at least up to 10. The 7-carbon alkane, that's heptane. Next, we have octane. And then after that, this is, that's a 20. This is nonane, or if you want to call it nonane. And then C10H22, that's known as decane. Now let's talk about how to draw the Lewis structure of C2H6. C2H6, we know that's ethane. And you can write the condensed structure like this. It's CH3, CH3. So this tells you how many hydrogen atoms are on each carbon. First carbon has three hydrogen atoms, and that's attached to the second carbon, which also has three hydrogen atoms. So that's how you can draw the Lewis structure of ethane. Now what about C2H4? How would you draw the Lewis structure for that? So this time, each carbon atom is going to have two hydrogen atoms instead of three. Because it's a total of four, and you want to make sure that the four hydrogen atoms are distributed equally. So what bond do we need between the two carbon atoms? Well, we know that carbon likes to form four bonds. So the only way this is going to happen is if we put a double bond between the two carbon atoms. And so this is known as an alkene. Alkenes contain at least one double bond. Alkanes do not contain double bonds. So a two carbon alkene is known as ethene. Now what about this one, C2H2? How can we draw the Lewis structure for that? Well, we have a total of two hydrogen atoms, so we're going to put one hydrogen atom on each carbon. And in order for the two carbon atoms to have four bonds, we need to put a triple bond in the middle because carbon likes to form four bonds. And so whenever you have a hydrocarbon with a triple bond, you now have what is known as an alkyne. A two carbon alkyne is known as ethyne. The common name for this is acetylene, and the common name for this compound is known as ethylene. Alkenes and alkynes are known as unsaturated compounds because they don't contain the maximum number of hydrogen atoms per carbon atom. Alkanes are known as saturated compounds. So make sure you keep this in mind. Now let's focus on the carbon-carbon bonds. What would you say, which of these bonds is the longest bond? The carbon-carbon single bond, the double bond, or the carbon-carbon triple bond? Which one is the longest, and which one is the shortest? You need to know that the carbon-carbon single bond 
is longer than the carbon-carbon double bond, and that's longer than the carbon-carbon triple bond. The length of the carbon-carbon single bond is 154 picometers, which is 1.54 angstroms. One angstrom is 100 picometers. The CC double bond is 133 picometers in ethene, and in ethyne, I mean ethyne, it's uh, 120. So what you need to understand are, is that triple bonds are short bonds, whereas single bonds are long bonds. Because sometimes you may get a test question that asks you something about bond length. Which of these bonds is the shortest, or which of these bonds is the longest? So single bonds are longer than triple bonds. Keep that in mind. So now that we've talked about bond length, let's talk about bond strength. Which bond is the strongest? The single bond, the double bond, or the triple bond? What would you say? The single bond is the weakest. The triple bond is the strongest. Why is that? Well, it's easier to break one bond instead of three bonds. Imagine trying to break a pencil. It's easier breaking one pencil than trying to break three pencils at a time. Three bonds are stronger than one. Now, let's talk about sigma and pi bonds. A single bond contains one sigma bond. All single bonds are sigma bonds. A double bond contains one sigma and one pi bond. The triple bond contains one sigma and two pi bonds. Now, which bond is stronger, a sigma bond or a pi bond? You need to know that sigma bonds are stronger than pi bonds. So it's harder to break this bond versus just one of the pi bonds in the triple bond. Not all three bonds, but one of the pi bonds. So in summary, a triple bond is stronger than a single bond because you're comparing three bonds to one. However, a sigma bond is stronger than a pi bond when you're comparing one bond with one bond. So I'm just going to say that one more time. Sigma bonds are stronger than pi bonds, but triple bonds are stronger than single bonds. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is bond order. What is the bond order for a single bond, a double bond, and a triple bond? This one is pretty straightforward. For a single bond, the bond order is 1. For a double bond, the bond order is 2. And for a triple bond, the bond order is 3. So that's just something to know. Now let's talk about hybridization. What is the hybridization of the carbon atoms highlighted in green? Would you say it's S, SP2, SP3, SP, DSP3, D2SP3? What would you say? A quick and simple way to determine the hybridization around a certain carbon atom is to count the number of atoms attached to that particular carbon atom and the number of lone pairs that it has. So this particular carbon atom is attached to four other atoms. So you could think of it as having four groups around it. So the hybridization is going to be S1P3 because the exponents add up to four. Now let's say if we want to determine the hybridization of this carbon atom. That carbon is attached to three other atoms. So it has three groups around it. The hybridization is going to be S1P2 or SP2 hybridized. And then for this particular alkyne, the carbon atom has two atoms attached to it. So for two groups, it's going to be SP hybridized. So that's a quick and simple way to determine the hybridization of a carbon atom. Here's a question for you. 